So earlier today, I posted a poll on Instagram, which is stupid. I should never ask the internet anything, but I haven't learned my lesson yet. I basically asked you guys if you'd want to see me cram a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core 24 thread part into my very lovely Dan Case A4 system here. We're going we're gonna to try to do it today. Right now, we have a Ryzen 7 2700 in here, non XQ, 65 watt TDP part. We've got an Asus ROG Strix X470i gaming motherboard, Mini ITX, of course. We've got 16 gigs of G Skill, Rip Jaws 5, DDR4 at 3200 speed. This, I believe, is a 500 gig Samsung 970 Evo Plus. Power supply is a Corsair SF450. Yes, that's enough juice to drive the system. We have a 92 millimeter liquid AIO directly from Asetek cooling our, our Ryzen chip here. And that's actually fixed with a 92 millimeter slim uh, knock to a fan. And on the other side, a big boy, or uh, I guess our little boy, a GTX 1080 Ti Mini from Zotac. Oh yeah, it's just it's such a beautiful system. I love it. For the last year or so, this has actually been my on-the-go workstation system. So for like CES earlier this year, we, we, we edited with this and it was awesome. It just did a fantastic job, stayed cool. In fact, I just did a test on Adobe Premiere Pro rendering out a 10 minute 4K clip with effects and everything. This is running stock and we didn't see temperatures over 69C. Woohoo! So not even topping 70 degrees Celsius right now, which is giving me uh, really high hopes here for our 3900X, even though we are dealing with significantly more threads. But yeah, 105 watt TDP chip compared to 65 watts on the 2700. So yeah, I am expecting this to get quite a bit warmer. By how much? I, I guess what we're about to find out. I'm hoping that it's not too hot to the point where the 92 millimeter AIO can't handle it and that we have to actually dumb it down to a uh, measly Ryzen 7 3700X. This is the, the eight core 16 thread part, but this is 65 watt TDP chip. So I think this one will be definitely manageable, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for the moonshot first. We're gonna stick the 12 core in first and then work our way down to the Ryzen 7 part if it just gets too hot. So the first thing though, is that we have to actually update the BIOS because this is an X470 board, which uh, currently is not running the, the latest compatibility BIOS with the uh, latest JSA update and stuff like that for Ryzen 3000. So I'm gonna update the BIOS, which means we have to leave this uh, second gen Ryzen chip in there for now. And then we'll go ahead and swap it out for the 3900X. Another thing worth noting here is that AMD has already confirmed that there's not gonna be a whole lot of manual overclocking headroom on, on Zen 2. And the reason for that is that they've already optimized their boosting algorithms pretty darn well. So Precision Boost 2 does a fantastic job already of maximizing the performance of the silicon without users having to get their hands dirty and void their warranty. Not that we care much about that at all anyway on this channel, but um, it is kind of nice that you're going to be seeing a lot more performance squeezed out of these chips right out of the box. It does kind of suck for enthusiasts because they don't get to see as big of gains with manually tinkering, but AMD did say that there should be a bit more headroom with their 65 watt TDP parts like the 3700X because there's just less power going through them initially, which means that there's more power to be squeezed out of them. The reason I bring this up is because if there's not a huge reason to overclock these chips in the first place, it kind of makes sense to put them into a system like this where cooling's very limited and restricts you from overclocking much anyway. So it seems like a good use case scenario, but we'll see how everything behaves once we've got those chips in here. For now, let's go ahead and get that BIOS updated so we can drop in that 12 core like it's hot. Well, I hope it doesn't get too hot. We have our 3900X installed. It's sitting pretty idling right now, anywhere in the 40s and 50s, which isn't too bad actually, but we'll see how it holds up under load. But uh, let's go ahead and start this test and see if the computer explodes. Starting now. Oh, I'm also gonna start the timer. We are underway and CPU temperatures have spiked up to around 70 C. As you can see, it's just gonna keep climbing as we continue rendering. Hopefully it'll stop at some point. We're almost at 80 C now. If we look at our clock speeds. Clock speeds are actually looking really strong. Four gigahertz, just over four gigahertz on all cores. Not too shabby there. PBO is doing a nice job of pushing all of our cores uh, when and where it can fairly aggressively. We're about uh, maybe a quarter done with our render here. Doesn't seem to be any sort of thermal throttling as far as I can tell. CPU utilization is close to 100%. That's really good. And back to our temperatures here, 80 C. So we're, I'm just gonna let this go for a while. We'll let it finish up and then we'll talk about how the 3900X did. Okay, we're about to finish here. And it looks like our max temp is about 94 C. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Okay, it just, it just stopped, okay. Six, whoa, really? Six minutes and 49 seconds. The 2700 rendered the same clip with the same effects in 13 minutes and 29 seconds. This did it in six 
49. That's freaking insane. Now granted the trade-off is heat. We did get a lot hotter than our 2700 as well, which didn't really top 70 degrees C. Here we, we could see a max temperature of 93.9. It wasn't at 93.9 the whole time. It steadily climbed until it hit that at the very end. That being said, still a bit warmer than the second gen Ryzen 2700. Even with our 92 millimeter AIO, I would honestly suggest a 240 rad at minimum for, for the 3900X, but of course that's not always an option in a case this small. So you can see here through the mesh, you can see that ugly Noctua fan. That's our radiator fan. It's right there. So maybe if we just, I don't know, I'm just getting ideas right here, just kind of spitballing here. What if we like somehow mounted a fan, did some little mod here where we could mount the fan like that, maybe put a fan grill over it so you wouldn't nick your fingers or anything? That might do some additional cooling, bring the temperature down, might even uh, increase performance if we can get those uh, PBO clocks up. So why don't we, why don't we give it a shot right now? Let's give it a try. Okay, I spent all of 60 seconds setting this up. This is just a concept. <laughs> I have it resting on one of the Wraith Prism RGB cooler, uh, the fan actually, just the fan portion. And uh, it's not mounted or secured or anything. It's just kind of sitting there, but it's actually hugging it pretty nicely. Uh, the cable is fortunately long enough to reach this other system right here. It's literally just powered on just so we can power the fan. It was just the quickest and easiest way to get the fan powered right now. Uh, I think we are ready to go again. Let's go ahead and reset the status here. Oh, I want to time it again as well, because I want to see if the render speeds up with, uh, with lower temperatures if we even get lower temps here. So ready, set, go, start, and let the render begin. We actually need to give the CPU a chance to warm up here. All right, so now we're just over halfway done with our render, and it looks like we are getting around 82, 83 C. That's probably still climbing to some degree, pun intended. I think this is lower than what the last test was showing at this point in the uh, encoding process. Our clock speeds are looking good as well. Still just about four gigahertz, just under on all cores. Looking pretty good so far. Of course, there's always a give and take with these kinds of things. And the take in this instance, is noise. The fan is a little bit noisy because it's on the outside of the case. It's also up against the side panel that's not intended to have fans mounted to it. So there's a bit of turbulence there. But for the most part, I would gladly take a little bit of extra noise for these much cooler temperatures. Oh, our render is almost about to finish. All right, hold on, ready? Oh, okay, 651. Okay, so about the same about the same score, uh, same time, but you can see our max temp was 86.6 C, much more favorable than the, what, 93 degrees on the last test. So I mean, just based on these results alone, we're, we're talking, uh, a potentially a 10 degree Celsius drop on our CPU just from doing a little modification with adding a fan here. And this isn't even optimal. I mean, this isn't even like super snug with a side panel that's not really conducive for, for fan mounting at all. So once the modification is done, we're probably gonna see even better performance than we saw today, which is just super exciting. I'm super stoked that we were able to just drop a 3900X in here and have it work beautifully. I mean, you wouldn't even think to put a 12 core Intel chip in here unless you had at least a 240 millimeter AIO. Um, so the fact that we're doing all this with a single 92 millimeter liquid cooler is phenomenal. I just can't wait to show you guys the follow-up video. It should be pretty awesome. Shooting this little video is actually getting me really excited for mini ITX X570 boards because once those are ready, we can drop that 3700X in there and actually have full native support for PCIe Gen 4, which means we can take some Gen 4 NVMe drives, potentially even raid them together and have a seriously killer editing system on the go. Ah! Okay, before I faint, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it before you go. Get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you guys in the next video.